cool. So, Chelsea stumble to a 2-0 defeat to Arsenal, as we've already mentioned. This is the goal review, where we'll be chatting with some of the boys that have been in the studio today about the game uh, and its pitfalls. A really poor performance from Eden Hazard. So, we want some calls from Chelsea fans uh, regarding his sort of... In lack of impact in, in today's games. Williams substituted after being the most creative player on the pitch for both teams. Five chances he created, but he was dragged off. Wonderful goal from Lacazette. How impressed were Arsenal fans with him today? And where were things won and lost? Because, of course, the, the midfield battle, some great defending from Arsenal. And, of course, being clinical up front. Everybody's going to have a different viewpoint and a different opinion. I'm uh, going to jump straight out to the boys in here. I'll go to Ar um, Adam straight away. You predicted a very comfortable win for Arsenal. You, you did a video for our channel, The Football Terrace, and said we were going to win, confident. You kind of got ridiculed and laughed at for having that opinion. And, and I'm being honest, I didn't see it coming either. Tell me how you're feeling right now. I'm feeling vindicated. Um, I know my football. People like to believe that I don't know what I'm talking about because I like to have a joke and a laugh. But here I am, standing or sitting. But I've made it through... And Arsenal have won. They were fantastic today. And everybody that said that Arsenal were going to lose, you just have to eat your, your words. Mark, that's it. Take your L. Take your L. Take your that's L's. Because I called it as well. Adam, well done. Thank Great you. shout. Well done you, Great shout. Well done. Fantastic. So it is. Uh, if Arsenal's point of view today, where where was it won for you? What, what was the, the those... Where were those sort of moments in the game? Where were those positions on the pitch? What were those battles that led to Arsenal... Uh, gaining the three points today, in your opinion? Um, our structure was was excellent today. Um, we held our defence well. You've got to sit back now, I can hear you. Um, oh. uh, 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 yeah, cool. our structure, basically. And then when we when it came to taking our chances, we looked like the team that was going to score um, when we pushed forward every time. Chelsea didn't really cause much of a threat. I mean, I think it was 13 shots on target, uh, on... on, on 13 shots and only one on target, which pretty much summed them up. Because when it came to the final third, they didn't have any answers. But it weren't just they didn't have the answers because we stopped them. Whether it was blocks, cutting off their corners, cutting off the angles for their crosses, we just we played well all over the pitch defensively. Adam, but why were you so confident though? Because Arsenal had been without people, people all week have been calling me disingenuous, but Arsenal have been in a really poor run of form defensively. They haven't been great. Um, what made you so confident? Um, I think it's the fact that what I've seen of Chelsea this season hasn't been impressive. Even though they've been keeping possession, the chances they've created haven't been like like forthcoming all the time. They've been few and far between. They've got all this mess about they need a striker uh, as if a striker's going to solve all their problems. Um, and they're signing players that they don't need. So all of that mess, I think, was going to play out on the pitch. Arsenal... When we need to turn up, we turn up. It was at home. We were always going to win this game. Always. Dan, your point of view. Chelsea fans sitting here today. Um, I assume I assume you were confident going into this game. I would have been in, in, in a, from a Chelsea point of view if I was a Chelsea fan because I do think you, you've been the better team out of the two this season. But there has been that lack of uh, clinical edge. I, I read somewhere that your last shot on target was in the 64th minute of the Newcastle game. I mean, people are obviously like having a bit of banter with that. I think you might have had one shot in that game. But, like, but, that, but that kind of banter, you're sitting there thinking, yeah, like that's not good enough. And th that was, that, 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 all your attacking players today, you know, not getting shots on target. I mean, you hit the post, but that's off target. You know, your self-proclaimed best player in the league doesn't show up. Why can't Chelsea, for all the possession and for all the creativity, why can't you finish teams off? Um, first of all, thanks for actually having me out here. I really appreciate it. Um, it's actually fun doing this other than seeing my team lose to Arsenal, which is... <laughs> I think there's one team I wouldn't want to see my team lose to. It's Tottenham, then it's Arsenal. So enjoy the W, guys, honestly. But um, as to, for the actual result itself, um, I was confident going into the game. I was always wary of Arsenal because, again, at home, they're always a very dangerous team. We've seen that even in the games where maybe they wasn't in the best of form. Against Liverpool, they turned up for 90 minutes, gave them a very tough game. Spurs, they played them off the park for 90 minutes. Even when they went a goal behind, they didn't let the setback deter them. They went again and they went on and they dominated, I think, what, 1-5-2, wasn't it? So, dominant game. So, again, with the game today, I expected us to have a large periods of play where we had a lot of the ball, 
we were going to recreate chances, but are we going to create great chances? We saw Pedro miss a couple of really good chances, but did we create any great chances? Not necessarily. Now, when you haven't got your best creative player in his best position, that can also happen. But then even still, we need more from our striker. He was Hazard today. We need more from our wingers, William and Pedro. Even though William created some of chances, maybe some of his decision-making wasn't the best. So, all in all, I can't be surprised by what I've seen because a lot of what we saw in that performance is what we've seen a lot of the season. Disappointing, yes, but it certainly was a bigger game for Arsenal than it was for us. It would have been great to put them in their place and pretty much leave them out of the top four race, but they're back in it. Fair play. We'll see what happens for the rest of the season. Disappointing, yes, but it's not... It's nothing... I'm not going to take any absolutes from today. Not like, oh, sorry, all of a sudden he's been found out or one of the, some of these players are not good enough that I found out today. No, a lot of what I saw today resembled a lot of the, resembled a lot of the season, so it is what it is. All right. Before we jump into some of the, the, the lesser performances, Lacazette's goal, Dan. I mean, a worldie, it? great feet. Uh, yeah, great I mean, finish. that finish. It's the difference it, between the two teams, really. You, you had Arsenal, you know, took the opportunities. Arsenal got some genuine strikers on, about Aubameyang and Lacazette. But these are boys that will take their chances when given an opportunity. Um, Chelsea, it's just, I've watched their last three games. It's just they're carbon copies of one another. To get up to the final third and just can't do nothing. Mm. Can't create a chance. Too slow in possession. Yeah, they don't play with enough pace either. No, it's so slow. It's pedestrian. Not, they're not hitting any teams with any any pace on the break. So by the time they get up to the final third, the teams are set up again and they, yeah, they've got yeah. their structure again. Uh, Arsenal, had the, you know, they, they had like at times nine, ten men behind the ball, set up really well, organised, and just stifled Chelsea completely out of it. It was easy. I know the Gooners in the room, Adam and, and yourself, you know. Um, were nervous, but me sitting there, I know this game was done at half time. There weren't a part of me that thought Chelsea were going to come back into it. I ch ch checked the odds, they were 14 to 1. I thought that ain't <laughs> worth a fiver of my money mm. back mm. in Chelsea at that point. I didn't see it. Yeah, like, cool. I've coined the phrase for, for other teams in the past, but Chelsea at the moment, with the way they're playing, I said it during the live stream, uh, friend zone football. They do a lot of the, the hard work, they do a lot of the grafting, they move the ball around well. It's quite aesthetically pleasing on the eye what they're doing but when it comes to scoring when it comes to penetrating the team they get like the, the, the opponents get it do you know what i mean it's like they do all the hard work you know but then their mate comes along and 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 get, gets gets what they're after swoops it away it, as a chelsea fan you've got higuain coming in if that doesn't work though and he suddenly he comes in and all of a sudden you're not scoring all these goals still and it's a much more deep rooted problem with the system what would your suggestions be um, for Sari to do in terms of who, who should be starting games, what position should they be in to ensure that you're, you're getting the best out of your players? So if Higuain doesn't hit the ground running, you're saying what should Sari go and do from that point? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, Higuain, what I hear from a lot of Chelsea fans is Higuain comes in, he will score all these goals that, that Hazard and William will create for him and everything's going to be okay. If that happens, great. If it doesn't though, and you're still having games where you're huffing and puffing mm. and you're not blowing the door down, What's next? All right, so um, I do understand that point. Again, I can see why a lot of Chelsea fans believe Higuain will solve a lot of our issues. And I think he will solve a certain amount, but let's see he doesn't score the goals. Um, I still want to see what's happening on the training ground now. I know a lot of a lot of emphasis on the training ground is what's actually been, in terms of building up the play from the back, how we're going to try and find Jorginho as a solution in the middle of the park in terms of beating the press. And we saw that a couple of times today. It was a bit sloppy at times, but again, Arsenal can do that when they're at home. Um, I feel like we need to work a lot on the training game in terms of what we're going to do in our chance creation. When we have the when we have a team on the edge of the box like Arsenal, who were just happy to sort of sit back with nine ten behind the ball, how are we going to create chances then? And whether we have a striker or not, I don't think a striker maybe would have changed that much today. But at the same time, we see Lacazette, Aubameyang, or so Lacazette today with his feet in that for his feet for the goal. Mm. I mean, Hazard's got great feet, but he's not got that striker's sort of niche in, his, in the back of his mind where he's thinking, you know what? Before I even get the ball, I'm going to do this. And like I said, before we got the ball, he's like, you know what, I'm going to get the ball, use my great feet, and then find the angle, put it top, you know, top corner. So, again, we do like that. And sometimes maybe the manager can't always fix everything in terms of maybe how he's going to um, how he's gonna create his tactics for the team. Because even still, our players on the pitch sometimes just are not good enough. And in a case like today, we just weren't good enough in certain areas. And again, maybe you want to blame some of that on the manager. I think you can do. But also some of the players got to take a lot of uh, responsibility for today because it wasn't good enough. I think that might be the problem where it's like you say um, if Higuain doesn't work with uh, with Hazard and William, it's that that's the problem with Chelsea mm. from where I see. Yes, yeah. where's where's the other option? What's if Williams and Hazard aren't working? That happens. People players dropping from. Where's the other option? What's your who's your other wingers to come in? And that's the you've got no other wingers. You've got nothing exciting Hudson on the wing. But... You're not you're not going to play him. Exactly. Like, forget him. He's off. See you later. 
ta da! Like, he's gone. <laughs> mm. His head's turned, man. And you can saw the way he's walking around. I don't like to do this. Oh, yeah, pick point, and you pick them, see, see what they look like at the end of a game, and you think they're off. But he doesn't look like he wanted to be there when he came, when he came on, because it was mm. just like, you brought me on for 20 minutes. We're 2-0 down. What am I meant to do here? I would have liked to have seen him for 20 rest, minutes. You only got 10 of, minutes. The rest of the team's not clicking as well. And it's just mm. like, huh, what's the point? You look at uh, Bayern Munich want me, 35 mil. If they're going to pay 35 mil for me at 18, I'm going to get a chance. Mm. He's gone. What you got to do is you got to try and bring in another winger, man. Because there's, there's no, there's no, there's nothing exciting happening on on uh, on your wings. You're not hitting anyone with any pace. Uh, I, I don't I, even think he needs to buy another wing. I think Sari, as you said in the stream, needs to stop being so stubborn. He needs to get a plan B quick. Like we saw Pep in his first season, he like wasn't he was trying to do these things, this inverted fullback swing. It wasn't working, so he had to switch it up. He had to switch up and it's worked for him. And Sari needs to get a plan B. And if he doesn't, he's pissed. No, that's, that's a good point. Again, you need to use all sorts of wider perspective here. This is his first season. And like you said, Pep Guardiola is a great example. In that first season, I think they were maybe, what, fifth in maybe February or March. So they were in a top four battle. They eventually got it out. But you know, Pep, uh, just to end on this, Pep, obviously, as you saw, in a transfer window, he did thought, you know, I need a, I need new fullbacks. 150 million investment. And look what they did. They had a record-breaking record breaking season and won the league. So, again, sorry, he needs time to obviously get his players into the system because clearly we haven't got the players to fulfill that in the fullback areas, maybe even in the midfield in terms of an attacking midfielder who can get us goals, create chances, do the things that we need, a, a club like Chelsea needs to supplement mm. the players like Hazard up front because if left to today, just the wingers that we have and obviously Hazard playing as a striker, those guys weren't doing enough to create chances themselves. Now they need support from the midfield and the fullbacks mm. and they weren't getting that today. You, you'd be better off mm. sticking with where you were at the early part of the season, either playing Morata or Giroud, Giroud up front. I, I, because, 100% agree, because agree. you were gaining 100%. more points and playing better football. I know you they're, they're not the ultimate end goal of challenging for the league, but you've gone backwards by taking both of them out of the game. Mm. It you doesn't know, make sense to have that vote. No, because when no, you're, only you're now in front, a worse position. Hazards. He's obviously lost faith in them and know they're not good enough. But by not even starting even mm. one of them, it's actually making making it worse. So, from Arsenal's point of view, though, today, Adam, who stood out for you? Who were your... We know Lacazette scored a great goal, we mentioned. Who are the boys who really wanted you today? Who are the standout performers that impressed you the most? The defenders. The, the two centre-backs. Yeah, and 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 and, and uh, I I love the the work rate from you said it earlier the work rate from the strikers. I mean, uh, Bamiyang twice in the first half, two great challenges. One in the penalty area, which they they showed he actually got his foot to the ball, and the other one where he hooked it hooked it round. It, it just that mentality uh, uh, around the team has sort of has, has pushed it through for us today, where they they've just gone and work, work their asses off. Yeah, it was, it was a definite workman-like performance from Arsenal. Mm -hmm. They were good at the And then when half. we needed to, we took our chances. Uh, you know, I used to play in defence. I, I could admire what they were doing, yeah. doing the, the ugly it's, stuff. It's hard, it's hard. You've you got to concentrate your for the shape, full time. Keeping yeah. your shape, not giving Chelsea any, any space to yeah. play in. It's, it's when a difficult have Arsenal job. Ever been able to, when have we ever, as Arsenal fans, been able to credit Arsenal with that? We've won other. No, the shape was great. So this is the second time I've seen Socrates celebrate a tackle. And I love that. I love mm. that so much. Yeah. And people are saying that this guy's not good enough. Okay. Well, Let him carry if, on. If, if you're playing in the back back four and, you know, there's like five minutes less left in the game, they're thinking we want the clean sheet. Of course. I mean, you need as much to a defender yeah. as that's not the score and win the goal, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I, the only thing I'd say in caveat to the, the Socrates thing is that I think he's a good, I think he's a very good player. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But we've just sat here and spoke about the, the lack of penetration and clinical edge from the Chelsea attacking line. Now, some of that you credit to really good defending, of course. But when, it, and when we're talking about the elite level players for Arsenal, that's a separate conversation about how you come back to challenging for titles. Are, 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 we saw what happened against elite level attacking teams. So what, when you played City, when you've played um, Liverpool as an example, those guys, they're just not quite on that same level. No. They're not They're not near Van Dyke's level. They're not near company at his best. They're not near, think about your best centre-backs you've had at your club. No one you've got is in that same ballpark. And that's the only thing I'd say. Socrates would be great with a with a Sol Campbell next to him. Yeah. And that's what you, and that's what I think, and that'd be fine because I think you can have someone who's very good, but you need someone to elevate Arsenal to that next level. It's about having genuine world class. And maybe Holden, Hol Holden's a guy that's going to develop into that. There there's the possibility. But that might take another two or three years for him to reach those levels. What is he, 21, 22? Mm -hmm. If that... Most defenders don't hit their peak to their mid-20s, mm -hmm. if not their mid to late. So I get that completely. Um, 
Is this just a flash in the pan for Arsenal, or do you think you're generally back in the top top four race now? But that's what I was saying earlier when I said when you said about this Deadwood FC. Like, I weren't necessarily putting Socrates in there. What I was saying is he's more. I see him more as a an option as a squad player. You have your two centre backs, and in them games where you need someone to bully teams, where you've got where you certain games you need certain types of defenders, but there's other games where if you're playing against a Barcelona, a City, a Liverpool, that someone with genuine scary pace up front, Socrates is getting wiped out all over the gaff, and he's giving away penalties like he did the other day. Do you know what I mean? So you can't so you can't say that people are saying because it is it's like you said, once you get to that level. Your defender needs to have everything. It needs to be quick. He needs to be smart. He needs to be strong on the tackle. It can't just be he's a bully and he's aggressive. He needs to have everything because mm. he's not that good at being a bully and aggressive to be the best in the world at it. He's not there. Cool. He's just that step below. Thank you very much, Cheers, boys. Thank you very.